Hello and welcome to No Rest for the Weekend, where we go behind the scenes and talk to the creators of independent entertainment. I'm Jason Godby, and with me in the Rabbit Hole studio today, she is a director of the indie feature Una Great Movie, now making its way through the festival circuit, Miss Jennifer Sharp. Welcome, Jennifer. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Thank you for coming. I appreciate it. You came all the way from L.A. Yes. Um, not just for this show, but for the uh, for the Brooklyn <laughs> Film Festival. Uh, we were actually uh, hooked up through uh, Jason, who's been on the show. He was actually on the show uh, talking about Brooklyn Film Festival. He's a great guy. He's awesome. So I'm glad that uh, he could make the connect. So thanks for coming. We're going to get uh, right into things because mm-hmm. we don't have a lot of time. But um, we want to talk about doing a great movie. Yes. And how you made it because uh, it's a great story. But first, let's talk about you and like, how did you come to filmmaking? What is your origin story, so to speak? So my origin story is I'm just one of those people who've always known what they wanted to do. So since I was six years old, I declared that I was going to be a movie star and go to Hollywood. When I was six or eight, like I would say that I'm going to go to a performing arts high school, a performing arts school in New York, and then I was going to get a scholarship to Hollywood. And that was always my plan. And that was six. And it's many, 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 many years later. And I'm still on that path. I had a, a, a Christina Rea, who's great, and she was talking about writing a screenplay when she was like nine. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's weird how that happens. It's like uh, it's like a genetic disorder. I it think, is, too. it is. <laughs> and uh, people say that I'm lucky. Like some people are like, "You're so lucky. Like you know what you want. Like right. you're so lucky." But it's also a curse because when you know what you want, you always want it. And as long as you're not getting it, you're never fully satisfied. And it's hard to be satisfied with whatever life brings you, which would actually be kind of nice. And it's, it's a lot harder doing what we do than it is, you know, some other things. It, um, it's, it's, uh, it's basically the impossible dream that you're trying to, uh, trying to make happen. Uh, but speaking of impossible dreams, yes. you made this movie and it's a great story behind, uh, how you got it made. So, Una great movie. First, before we get into the making of it, what is the film about? Like, give me the Hollywood logline of it, if you would. The anti-Hollywood logline is it's a beautiful movie about a black woman traveling through Mexico that slowly transforms into a romantic comedy with all white people. (laughs) So uh, interesting premise. I saw the film, liked it. Uh, lots of good stuff in it, um, and you said you we were talking earlier, and you said that this film took you quite a while to make. So, uh, just kind of walk me through the journey of like from from in, from idea inception through to uh, festival. When did the germ of the idea first start for you? So, the germ of the idea started in 1999, which at this point is 20 years from now. When I was traveling through Mexico with a friend, and I found this island, and as a creator, as someone who knew what they wanted to do since they were six, I set foot on this island, and some I don't know the magic the people, the vibe, or maybe it was me knowing my future, or maybe what came first, I don't know, but I just knew I wanted to make a movie there, like something about it changed my soul. So I knew I wanted to make a movie in this town in Mexico. So I went back to New York City where I was living. I worked doubles for six months as a waitress to save $3,000. I moved to Mexico in 2000. I moved to the town. I said, I'm not leaving until I've made my script. That was in 2000. I left the town five months later with a script, and I had told the entire town, it's a small town, like population, a thousand people. Wow. Fishing village. And they all knew I was writing, and I'm like, you know, this random American girl, black girl, you know, who aren't many, aren't any black people there, and she just came and like became part of the island. So they, so I told them, I promised them before I left that one day I would come back and make a movie here. I promised them, I was like, one day, one day. So that was in 2000. 16 years later, I have been writing scripts every year, doing everything that Hollywood tells you to do correctly, like write good scripts, send it to contests, send it to agents, send it to managers, somebody will find you, find connections. I lived in LA for 13 years trying to do that. And in 2016, I started reading through my old journals and I realized like, you know, every script has a Mexico portion. Like I, something in me needs to go shoot this. And um, I heard myself saying the same thing over and over again. I mean, 2002, 2005, like I was opening journals, I was looking at my myself talk and I realized I was the definition of insanity, which was saying the same thing over and over and doing the same thing over and over and it never happening. So this was two, June 2016. I made the declaration that I am not that kind of insane. I'm a different kind of insane and that there's no way that a year from now I will be saying the same thing. Like if if I'm on the streets, like whatever happens, I don't care. But what I don't want is to in a year say, I want to make that movie in Mexico. So I went in June of 2016. I didn't even have a script because all my scripts kept varying and changing and none of them were really relevant. And then also they would cost money and I just needed something I could do cheap. Like I was like, I'm going to go, I'm going to use my friends that are locals as actors because they're super cool. And and I just know there's some story there. So I didn't even have a script. 
And I declared, I quit my job, I took my life savings, $15,000 was all I had. I raised all my credit card limits. And I went to Mexico and told everybody on the island, I will be shooting a movie here in six months. Is that possible? Is that cool? Like, will you help me? The fishermen, I needed their boats and I needed people to give me free food and I needed the town to get behind me. So I literally went and was like, I am making my movie. And they're like, you've been talking about this for 20 years. Like, make your movie. They're like, Yenny. They call me Yenny. Like, Yenny, make your movie. Make your movie. We're going to support you. Yeah, follow your dream. Like, we're behind you. So this whole town in Mexico got behind me. And I was like, great. And they were like, okay, what's it about? And I was like, um, I don't know. Like a random, a random girl goes back to find an old love. Like I just kind of picked a storyline, but I knew it was really more about showing the island and showing the people. And then in those next six months, so then I went back to LA and I started fundraising. I started crowdfunding and I started writing the scripts. And six months later, in January of 2017, I was in Mexico shooting the movie. Wow. You, you, this started 20 years ago and then a couple of years ago. Two, so it's about, what, three, three years, years? Three years in the making. Then uh, at some point you you get to Mexico and you start production. Yeah. How long are you there through the process? Um, so in the six months leading up, I was back and forth a lot and I had to go to Mexico City. I had to find a whole Mexican crew and I didn't know anything about filmmaking in Mexico. I had no. So I just did Facebook posts like who knows a DP in Mexico, who knows a producer. So I took two trips to Mexico City. I had lined up meetings with people and I hired my crew. So that was a lot of back and forth. And then, then I'd come back to L.A. and I try to cast my L.A. actors that I was bringing with me and I try to keep fundraising. And so I was doing that all at the same time while I was crewing up. And then I moved to Mexico in November. We shot in January. I had two month rap. I had to rap in Mexico by myself because I've done this whole thing by myself. Like I don't have a crew, I don't have a team. So when my Mexico crew left, I had to stay on the island for like six weeks, rapping everything, doing damage control, like, you know, just all the stuff you do. So I was in Mexico like for four and a half months straight for production slash rap. And then a lot back and forth. And I also did my post-production in Mexico City. Oh, okay. So I, I've basically been in Mexico a lot. So you get your Mexico movie, and then there's another portion that's shot in L.A., right? Yes. So how long before you have Mexico wrapped do you actually get to shoot the rest of the movie? So I spent all my money in Mexico. That was, like, my big goal. Like, let's just do the Mexico part. I'll go through my money. I'll figure out the rest then. So I came back from Mexico, and I cut together the entire movie. Um that I had shot in Mexico, and I needed $50,000 to finish LA. So I used a year to fundraise and a year to edit. And I took my intern, I had an intern for two months who showed up just in time, and him and I shot the entire movie with my stuffed animals. <laughs> so all the stuff, all the LA part. So I could have the whole, so I had the whole Mexico part edited, and then I cut in the LA portions like with stuffed animals and me and him and wigs. And, and so I could see the whole movie, and I started re editing it and I started rewriting it. I took a whole year to show people. Like I literally did screenings with the stuffed animal cut. And because of that, I rewrote the entire ending, actually, based on that. And then we reshot the ending with stuffed animals. And I got to see that because the ending I love. Like, I love the ending. It wasn't that. And it all that all came from the stuffed animal cut and, like, figuring out how to do that. So that was a year getting feedback, re-editing, working on the score with my composer, who was, like, another blessing. You're, so, you're essentially workshopping this movie into For, yeah. existence kind yes, of thing. Yes, totally. Okay. Yeah. So you've, now you shot the L.A. portion. And then uh, how long are you taking now for post? So then I finished in March, and I literally just got, for the Brooklyn Film Festival, which is in June, first week of June, I got my final, like, DCP colored notes version back from my colorist, like, three weeks before the festival, four cool. weeks before the festival. So a year. And, and that was also because I, I did everything. Like, I'm the editor, but I'm the assistant editor. I mean, I did all the syncing. I, I, I mixed all the ambience and Pro Tools. Like, I did the whole sound, like, pre-mixing um, ambient stuff. And then I had a sound designer who helped me design. And then I took it to a mixer in Mexico City, and we mixed it. But I, I pretty much did everything. So it's been a year for me to do everything. Now, this is what most people would say don't do. Don't do everything yourself. Get a team. I mean, you didn't, you weren't, quite Robert Rodriguez like you didn't do the whole film by yourself <laughs> like you had yeah. a crew in Mexico um, but uh, you know doing all the post and all this kind of stuff so and and it can be done but it will take you longer yeah you know uh, you t this is three years that you and then was this kind of decision like this is just not gonna get done unless I just do it myself yeah I mean that's what I realized like it hit me that I will never make this movie if I don't just do it and so you know I call it my kamikaze mission 
And it's true, like, I can't say you all should do that because you really have to get a little bit to a suicidal stage where you're willing to lose everything. And I was and am. I mean, I still, like, have, I don't know how I'm going to pay my rent. And, you know, like, I I live it one bit at a time, but, like, things keep coming and things keep working out. And I'm just on this journey. Yeah, so I yeah I did it. Any way you could do it, it like I've, I've said many times on the show, there's many different paths to Mecca. There's many different ways to get there. And, and no one way is right for anybody. Yeah. But, you know, you had kind of done the Hollywood thing, and you did what people – and it just wasn't working. Yeah. So, like, you're, you're going to do that for the rest of your life, or you're going to find a way to make something else happen. And, you know, I, I, can, I did see the movie, and, you know, I think there's a lot of good stuff in it. Mm -hmm. And – one of the things I like about it, one of the things I thought was really, which made it authentic, was the fact that you actually did shoot in Mexico. Uh, there are real Mexicans in the movie, and uh, everybody seems really natural. The acting is really natural. Uh, I feel like, you know, because you had the experience there, you were able to write for people so that you had, like, uh, people, I guess, playing themselves in a way. Uh, which uh, sometimes doesn't work out, yeah. but uh, you, you know you took a chance and it worked. And then I also like that all of the people in the movie seem like real people, and they don't seem like they're not. It's not very actory. Uh, you know, you have uh, essentially uh, two female leads, and uh, neither one of them look like Tessa Thompson or Holly Berry, uh, and it's not sort of the Hollywood standard. Yeah. Of, and uh, everybody seems very real and very believable. And Mexico is just like, you get such great production value out of it. You don't see people shoot there. You get such great production value out of it. I don't know, how, how much did you raise in total for this film? Including investors? Everything. Like, that I raised, and not, like, money, like, cash. Because I also have a bunch on credit cards, but not including what's on my credit cards, like, just how much cash did I actually end up bringing in. About, I would say, $200,000. And yeah. this is all stuff you raised yourself? Myself. Yeah, and like that, talking about crowdfunding, like I started crowdfunding and talking about things that they say never to do that I did because like everything they tell you not to do, I did on this movie. And one of the things when you research crowdfunding is you never do it alone. You always need a team of people because you got to, you know, reach out. And um, I didn't have a team and I did it by myself. And it's a lot of work and it's calling people. And I mean, it's a whole thing. But if you're willing to do the work and you're willing to work 18, 20 hour days and you're, you have common sense. Um, then you do it. And I, I was including the investors that all found me, all my investors found me via crowdfunding because I did videos every week and I just, I did it like I bombarded people with it. And so they started following me and following me and then they all reached out to me and I've gotten with investors and crowdfunding like 40,000, 150,000, 20, 20, 10, 10, like probably like $220,000. Wow. And uh, I raised it all and I raised the first 70,000 in six months. And I mean, I just all throughout this, these three years is what I've keep what I've gotten. And then you did another crowdfunding after you already had the Mexican Porsche shot. I didn't actually. Oh, you didn't. Okay. No, I and I still I I plan on only doing another crowdfunding when I if I have to distribute it myself, and that'll be my next crowdfunding, like um, in theaters because I want it in theaters. So that's like a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand plan dollar plan. Hopefully, it doesn't come to that. But the crowdfunding is a lot of effort. And so, no, but I was kind of crowdfunding the entire time because when I started, I did these videos every week that followed me. And I was always like, I always had my camera and I'd be like talking. And so I'd post like, this is what I'm doing. Here I am in Mexico City. Here I am asking this guy in the island to, to play his part and telling him what he's going to do. And it all just became, so people started following and they're like, you're crazy. And there was like a time I was talking to my brother on the phone and I had a whole meltdown and I was in tears and it was just like, and then I was sitting in front of my computer and I was like, I should be recording this because I'm trying to show what it's really like. So I just pushed record on my computer. So I have a whole episode, episode 14, the meltdown that um, I'm crying on the phone to my brother the whole time. And I posted it. So people were following my whole journey. And so along the way, I got back from Mexico and got a call from somebody that said, what's your investor plan? I'd like to put 10000 into it. You know, it, it's interesting because I, I feel like this is a little bit of the Earl Burroughs, like the snake eating its tail sort of thing, because you have a meta narrative in the movie yeah. of somebody writing a movie and then you're doing the behind the scenes documentary yeah. documenting the movie about the movie within the movie exactly kind of thing um which um again that's one of the things that probably in a screenwriting class they would tell you never to do wait can i so that being said yes. when i was shooting in la we needed a movie theater Okay. And we needed like a full theater because it's supposed to be this great like premiere thing. And how are we going to get extras into the movie theater? Well, I decided to cut all my episodes together. And at that point, I had like 32 episodes and they're like three or four minutes each and make a documentary of the making of the movie. 
And I so I made a documentary of the making of the movie from all my footage. And this is while I'm shooting. Like, this is while I'm still trying to make this movie. I cut together a full documentary. I got a th- rented a theater in North Hollywood and just publicized, like, come see my documentary, the making of this movie. And as you are in the watching the making of, I will be filming you because you will actually be in the final scene of the movie where we need people in the movie theater. So I was shooting the movie, and to get people in there, I, I showed them the making of the movie. And I had to cut that all together while I was making the movie. That's so awesome. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's like one of the best stories yeah. I've heard on this show. Yeah. But the cool thing is, too, now also, since you have all that footage, that's another thing that you can, you know, you've been using to market the movie, but mm-hmm. that might be a movie in itself that you could market. Totally. Like that could be a whole other project. Which, you know, God knows you got enough on your plate. <laughs> but, no, you know, but yeah, because I've done two ser- movies in one. No, yeah, but that's it. great. Yeah. That's amazing because you had like, now you have so much material to go out. And, you know, people do invest in stories that, uh, that happen. Like people it will invest in you yeah. and invest in the, you know, even, and, it, and it's really, it's like this show. I always tell people like, I don't review shows. Uh, I don't review movies on this show because it's more about the making of the movie than it is the actual movie. It's more about learning, uh, people out there learning from the process. And this is a hell of a process. And, you know, no, I wouldn't recommend anybody do this. But, you know, desperate times, desperate measures. Yep. <laughs> and, you know, sometimes you just got to do it. You know, one thing I say is, like, it's a good-looking movie. You ha- Technically, it's very sound. It's good, good picture, good sound, good acting. Like, everything looks really good. And the production value that you had looks like you spent a lot more than $200,000. Yeah. You know, it looks like, you know, it it doesn't look like The Avengers, but yeah. it looks like a really, it looks like a well-made, well-directed movie um, with, you know, and, you know, your nervous breakdown notwithstanding, you know, but <laughs> the, the fact is you got it done and now you have it uh, and now it's going to be the thing that will hopefully open other doors for you. And I, I think the, the documentary thing is great too. Yeah. You know, most people don't think to do that. Uh, most people don't want to go through the work to do that. It was stressful and a lot of work, and a lot of people were like, stop doing the videos, because that was when I was crying to my brother that day, because I was like, I have too much to do. I have to find a DP. I have to find a crew. I still need money. And then he, and then I have to, and then I'm, then I have to post a video tomorrow, because tomorrow is Monday. And he's like, stop making the videos. Like, just stop. Like, no. And I'm like, no, I have to. And for some reason, I was like, I have to. And that was hard. So every week, I had to edit together a new, like, three to four minute video. And they were actually good videos. Like, they were entertaining. It wasn't just like, here I am talking about this. I'm like, showing a rehearsal of me and a guy in Mexico and I'm cutting the rehearsal together. I have me in Mexico City interviewing people. Like I'm and then I cut it together and then I put music and they're all these really cool little movies on their own. So while I'm doing everything by myself, making the whole movie like alone, like single handedly producer, like everything, I am also producing videos every week following my journey. Uh, I, I would say uh that's crazy. It's crazy. It's so much work to do, but it's what an experience yeah. that people, you know, because now, like, and and for you to do that thing with the theater, that's awesome because now people are invested in the movie. And, you know, uh, you know anybody who's done crowdfunding will tell you the crowd comes before the funding. So now, like, if you want to do distribution, like, hopefully you won't have to do that yourself. I'm hoping that through yeah. the festival circuit you can get somebody to distribute you, be it in theaters or online or whatever. But... Now you can say, hey, listen, I've got a built-in audience who's waiting to see this movie because they went through the pain and the struggle that I went through trying yeah. to make this movie. Um, and, you know, and, of course, you made it to this show, so you'll get a tremendous bump. <laughs> but, you know, but, like, I think, uh, I think that's all great stuff. But one thing I would ask you before, uh, before we go is you kind of took the long way around. You, you did something r- different. You did, you, you, like you said, you did things that people say don't do. But... If you had to give somebody advice on, you know, in terms of they want to make their film, what would you tell them? So what I would say is nobody can actually tell you how to do it. There's no set way. And so I wouldn't say do it my way. Do your own movie. Spend your savings. Like do this crazy thing unless that's your path. And maybe some of you need to hear that. Like maybe some of you do need to hear. No, you've known you wanted to do this. You know you're good. Nobody else thinks you're good. You're going to have to prove it. But whatever, I would say you figure out what your path needs to be and understand that your path is not necessarily the path that everybody says that every book says to do it this way do it that way and I wasted I feel like I wasted time trying to do everything the way Hollywood tells you to do it like doing the scripts having the meetings writing to agents finding the connections like I did that for 
16 years and it didn't work. And if I would have stopped and looked at myself sooner and been like, you know, that has never worked for you. It doesn't work for you. You hate the networking. What you love is this. I would have thought of another way to do it sooner. So I would say just look at what your blocks are, look at what your patterns are as a human being and understand how you need to work to succeed and figure out your own way. And it might not be the way everybody's telling you. That is such a hard pill to swallow. <laughs> you know, like that is one of those things that like in theory, like what you just said is totally correct. I think, you know, find your way to do it. But man, to be that honest with yourself and to be that like determined to do it you are made of some other metal than earth woman because yeah. damn that's a lot so i, I think yeah. you know uh, yeah and and it doesn't work like that method doesn't work for everybody and people are making it themselves uh hopefully they have help you know hopefully you know after you make this movie you want to make your 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 next movie you won't have to go through this struggle because you'll have this say hey look what i made and it's quality uh and you know you'll get to that next step even more um before I, I wrap up, um, where, where can people, if they want to know more about you or more about the movie and want to support the movie, where can they find you? So uh, two places. One is my website, um, www.unagreatmovie.com, and sign, subscribe, so you can be on my mailing list and keep following this journey and get this army behind me to help make indie films go. Um, I also have a YouTube channel, Una Great Movie YouTube, which has all my episodes on it, except I've taken out like seven or eight main ones because of the documentary. I actually am trying to market that as well, so I can't have all of that on the website. But I have like 43 episodes, and of the 43, I think I have like 30 of them on the Una Great Movie channel and on the website. So check out some of the behind the scenes there. I will definitely do that. It sounds great. I, I think it'd be a tremendous learning experience experience for anybody looking to make a movie yeah um but holy god man uh <laughs> that is so much to do but anyway thank you for coming thank you for sharing the story and uh thank you all out there for uh for taking this trip down the rabbit hole for more episodes of this show you can find them on our website no rest of the weekend podcast.com you can also find us on uh, patreon We're on patreon.com slash no rest of the weekend and you can sub subscribe to us on all the major podcast channels uh once again i just want to give another quick uh, shout out and thank you to jennifer sharp thanks so much You're welcome. that was great that's going to make <laughs> such a great show uh and i can't wait for your net network to embrace this uh, but for anyway, for Behind the Rapper Productions, I'm Jason Godby. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. <laughs>